Textures can get messy fast. You've got one for clothes, another for skin, another for props, and suddenly your project is full of heavy 4K image files. But what if you could do it all with just one tiny texture? That's exactly what a texture atlas does. Instead of having separate materials and textures for each of your characters and environment assets, everything can share a single texture. All you have to do is shift the UVs around the atlas to pick the colors you want. It's a super quick and easy way to handle UVs because you don't even need to worry about neatly unwrapping things. Depending on how complex your scene or game is, you can make the atlas as small as you want. For example, an 8x8 image gives you 64 colors and a 16x16 image gives you 256. You can either download pre-made atlases or make your own. One of my favorite sites is lowspec.com. They've got a massive library of color palettes, which is perfect if you're not confident with picking colors yourself. Just choose a palette you like and download it. Or you can make your own atlas in Photoshop, GIMP, or even Blender's image editor. Just create a new image texture, set the resolution, maybe 8x8 pixels, and start filling each pixel with different colors. It's best to start small because you can always increase the image size later if you need more colors. Here's a character I made recently, and right now it has fairly standard UVs. Let's load our texture atlas into the shader editor. The first thing you'll want to do is change the texture's interpolation from linear to closest. Whenever you're using pixel-based textures, set it to closest, and this keeps the edges crisp. If we look at the UVs now, you'll see that they're stretched across the entire image, which is why everything looks multicolored. To fix the UVs, we can select the entire model, then in the UV editor, switch to vertex mode, press A to select everything, and then scale everything down with S0. Now all of the UVs collapse into a single point, and we can move this point around the atlas to pick whichever color you want. Now we just need to select the different parts of our model and move their UVs to different parts of the texture atlas. You can select the different parts of your model however you like. Since this one already has seams, I can hover over an area in face select mode and press L to use linked selection. If your model doesn't have seams, you'll just need to select the faces manually. For this first pass, just block in your main colors. Don't worry about details yet, just get everything in place. When you're done, your character should be fully colored. Let's just plug the texture atlas directly into the viewer node so we can see the colors properly. Now if you look at the UVs, you'll see lots of little points scattered across the atlas. At any point, if you don't like a color, just move the UVs to a new spot. I'm going to reorganize my viewport a little bit, so let's have the texture at the bottom because the texture is long so it makes it easier to see. Then we can add a second viewport and we can disable the overlays so that we're just seeing the colors. It's sometimes difficult to see when you have the wireframe and selection active. Now let's add some details, starting with the eyes. We're missing pupils, and I also want a black outline around the eyes, so with the eyes selected, press I to inset them slightly. Now we can select this outer loop and move its UVs onto black. For the pupil, select the four faces in the center of the eye and set them to white. If you have the Loop Tools add-on enabled, you can right-click, Loop Tools, Circle to turn them into a perfect circle. I also want to create a shadow shape across the nose, and we can do this with the Knife tool. All we have to do is cut our shape across the nose and again just move the UVs to create a shadow. You can continue doing this for the whole model, adding loops, insets and cuts to create more detail. It's a super fast and flexible way to get nice results. And the best part is how easy it is to make changes. You can instantly swap colors or even do fun experiments like selecting all of the UVs and sliding them across the atlas for different color schemes. It might not look perfect, but it's a great way to brainstorm ideas for different characters or color schemes. Another type of atlas you'll see is a gradient palette. Instead of a single color per square, you get a gradient of shades to work with. You can even make one yourself. Just open it in GIMP or Photoshop, expand the canvas vertically, and stretch the palette along the y-axis. Then add a black or colored gradient and set the blend mode to multiply. Now back in Blender, swap out the old atlas for this new gradient image. The character might look a bit darker at first, since the UVs are centered in the middle of the gradient, but just drag them upwards to brighten things. So earlier we scaled all the UVs down to a single point, but for this we want the UVs to spread vertically along the texture to give us that gradient. So we can just select all of the hair and press U and project from view. Now the UVs are spread across a few of the colors, but we only want them to be vertical, so we can press SX0 and scale them down on the x-axis. We can also scale them on the y-axis, and this will give us more of that gradient to work with. This way you can move the UVs back and forth to pick not just a flat color, but an entire gradient. Depending on how tall you made your gradient, you may see lines instead of a smooth gradient, so in this instance we can change the interpolation of the texture from closest back to linear, and this will blend all the colors together. 
Our image has three shades of green side by side, so by rotating the hair UV slightly, we can create a gradient across the three colors. If the gradient looks upside down to you, you can press OR 180 to rotate it 180 degrees, which will flip the gradient. And that's pretty much it. At this point, all you have to do is repeat the same process for your entire model, cutting details with the knife tool, insetting, beveling, and making loop cuts. You can use this method for characters, weapons, props, basically anything in your scene, and everything runs off a single tiny texture. So hopefully that gives you a solid start with texture atlases in Blender. I'd recommend checking out lowspec.com for palettes, and also experiment with making your own ones. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.